Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Woodcock, and it's great to be with you today at the Open Data Cube conference. I'd like to give you a bit of an overview of the impact the Open Data Cube has had at the CSIRO and with our many clients and collaborators in our work in the Earth Observation. We'll begin with having a look at the Earth Analytics at CSIRO and the diversity of, of use cases and technologies that are involved and also our Earth Analytics Science Innovation Hub and how we're using that and the Open Data Cube within it to really accelerate how we take our research outcomes and make them available to industry and government um, globally. Then we'll look specifically at the contributions that we make to the Open Data Cube community, and we hope you're enjoying some of those and consider some of those in your future work. Um, a brief overview of the Easy Data Pipelines and also uh, a look at really just how this is actually playing out for us uh, with our both our research and our public good deployments and also our commercial enterprise deployments and engagement we have um, using the Open Data Cube. So Earth observation at CSIRO is a big area. We have um, a few hundred researchers working in Earth observation or, or related fields. Uh, we not only do satellite data from, from the public um, data sets that you see globally, like Sentinel and, and Landsat, uh, but we also make very heavy use of high resolution data acquired from satellites and also from airborne and UAV type um, data sets. We combine that also with um, field work. So we have uh, sensors like a uh, hydrospectra, which is used for um, in situ sensors on, on ground for aquatic reflections and so forth. And we combine those data sets together um, into our analytics um, uh, codes to provide some of the best of breed uh, water quality type algorithms, um, agricultural work. Uh, we have researchers in oceans, atmosphere, minerals and mining areas, urban researchers and so forth. So it's quite a broad area and creating an analytics platform that's capable of handling all of those is actually quite uh, challenging uh, given the variety of data and the variety of research that's being performed. As a result, we have a system which we call EASY or the Earth Analytics Science and Innovation Hub. Um, the core analytics are powered by um, Open Data Cube, of course. Uh, that's one aspect of it that's very important for our Earth observation work. Uh, we also make very good uh, use of the Pangeo area um, or work, which is primarily around climate and oceans type uh, modeling type work. Uh, we have machine learning capabilities in the system um, and uh, are really just drawing on the Python scientific data ecosystem um, quite broadly. Um, we use this environment easy for really accelerating the transfer of the research outcomes that we're producing um, into use by um, large to small medium enterprises, government and research organizations on a global scale. Um, as a result, we have easy um, deployments in a number of regions around uh, the world, uh, Australia, of course, um, the United States, Chile, Southeast Asia, and we are in providing easy as a deployment option as a, a shared tenancy for commercial subscribers um, and we have a, a couple of those as well as um, an enterprise um, secure environment um, for organizations that want their own system uh, integrated fully within their enterprise and this type of engagement is enabling us to use easy as a platform to conduct research with those organizations and then transfer that research outcome um, directly into use by that organization so the EASY itself, as I mentioned, is an ecosystem. It's not just Open Data Cube. It's a, a wide variety of systems across the Python um, tool suite. It has, as a result, a range of interfaces. And the point I wanted to make with this range of interfaces is it is very common for our work um, to begin at the exploratory phase and Jupyter Labs and direct Python um, coding um, using things like Visual Studio Code, which is also available through the EASY interfaces. Using that direct uh, uh, coding interface to do that iterative analysis in an environment that we know can be deployed uh, and used directly with, with our clients um, begins at that exploratory data analytics. It starts there. You can pick it up and then put it into a web application for on-the-fly creation of a product or in a scale of production workflow for automated update. You can do the experiment and then you can transfer it to print production and the code is staying relatively the same all the way through. And that, that's really the power that we're getting from the, the EASY system. So the capabilities of EASY mentioned Open Data Cube, clearly a part of it. Analysis ready data is clearly also very important. Um, we apply this not only to Earth observation data, but also data coming from things like our hydrospectra sensor for field measurements and in-situ measurements and having that flow into the system. 
Um, our users have in this environment their own space as well as shared project spaces. This is all handled and authenticated under attribute-based access control within the system, which is a, a key enterprise feature for the easy system. Um, we also have users have their own customizable DAS clusters, plural. Um, users can actually have their own DAS clusters, multiple of them, um, and they can scale those up and down as required for, for their particular uh, research workflow that they're undertaking. The actual platform will scale to um, thousands of cores. Um, it may scale even higher. Uh, that's kind of the limit we've, we've got to at the moment in terms of demand. Um, and we perform multi-sensor data integration very routinely. And so there is a variety of data more than just Earth observation in the system. The actual system itself is a Kubernetes um, cluster running on AWS. Um, it's all managed um, through um, DevOps controls, um, think tools like HashiCorp Terraform um, and Flux. And this has been a very important part of that automation of deployment. Without that, I doubt very much we could actually run this system. There are many thousands of moving parts across the multiple deployments. SARA itself contributes to the ODC in a number of areas. Um, in particular, we're interested in things like the ZAR driver for Open Data Cube. Uh, that ZAR driver adds uh, multidimensional support. For us, it's particularly important for handling hyperspectral satellite data. Um, which is coming, starting to be an increasing part of our work. We also have extensions for supporting uh, LiDAR data from JEDI and a number of other satellites um, as part of our work and coming through. And that we'll be contributing those components back into the Open Data Cube community as they come on board. We're also core contributors to the Kubernetes and Terraform environment. Um, and feel free to reach out to us for assistance and advice in that area. If you're uh, interested in setting up a production Open Data Cube that scales, we also play a role in coordinating with the international space agencies, um, USGS, Landsat, um, analysis ready data from um, uh, Copernicus, et cetera. Uh, doesn't happen without influence, and both Geoscience Australia and CSIRO contribute contribute directly um, into the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites leadership roles, coordinating um, activities in ensuring that uh, information systems and services across all the CIOS agencies are making more and more of the data available on the cloud and in analysis ready form for you to use. Another area we contribute to is, of course, in science and applications um, outside of DataCube Core. Uh, some of the notebooks that you see um, kicking around in the Open DataCube community uh, have had contributions from CSIRO, and we work very closely with GA on a number of products as well. So all of this work on the Open Data Cube has had, and the Earth Analytics Science Innovation Hub has had a tremendous impact on our research. We have um, um, several hundred users within CSIRO and um, and a few dozen projects um, actually operating on easy as a routine matter now. Um, and that's uh, in a pre-production phase. We're actually working with our corporate enterprise IT group now to uh, uh, get it into a, a fully production um, environment uh, with single sign-on across the whole of CSIRO at the moment. And uh, we've also deployed this, as I mentioned, into multiple regions around the world, and we have commercial subscribers. So at the moment, we're actually running um, seven production um, environments of EASY uh, across the planet um, with a very wide variety of data types coming through our data pipelines capability um, and more are, are coming online as we, as we speak. Uh, we're looking to add a lot more work around the enterprise features, particularly fine-grained access control on, on resources and um, control on um, billing and uh, cost controls within the system itself. Um, and we're also looking for a way to encourage the creation of going from a notebook to a dashboard. And so with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for your time today, and I hope this has been a useful overview. Uh, if you'd like further information, feel free to contact any of the members of our, of our team. Um, and thank you again, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the Open Data Cube conference.